That just fell off. That wasn't even from a crash. Just boop. This is what you get in the box. You get the two rear sets fully assembled, already Loctited, I checked, uh, except for one bolt that uh, will Loctite later, I'll show you. You get two bolts and spacers if you want to change it to GP shift pattern. On the right side rear set, the heel guard isn't attached because the rear bolts that hold the master cylinder on are shared with the heel guard, so we're going to reuse those from the stock bike. And the two bolts either side that hold the rear sets to the frame, we're going to reuse those as well. The attack resets don't come with the brake light switch or with a spring for the uh, rear brake pedal. So the factory one uses a uh, pull switch. So when the lever goes down, it's attached to a spring and it pulls the switch open to tell the rear brake light to turn on. So we're gonna replace a banjo bolt for the rear brake with one of these. And in the back of it, it has a switch that senses pressure. So when you step on the pedal, it sends a signal, turns the rear brake light on without anything connecting to the moving part of the pedal. Then we have this spring to give a little more feedback and a little a quicker return on the rear brake pedal. It's actually from the Woodcraft resets. It's a replacement spring for those resets. So if you go onto the Woodcraft website, it's the 1.25 inch option uh, to fit Yamaha R6s and it fits the state trainer as well. Now I found a supplier for these in Australia. It cost $30 Australian dollars plus $10 shipping. So I paid $40 for this little spring. And I would suggest getting it, uh, even riding on the track or the street. So if you're riding on the track, you don't need the sensor. But if you're riding on the street, I would suggest getting the spring. It's a little hard to tell you're pressing the rear brake pedal, especially with riding boots on, until you're putting a significant amount of force into it. Um, and I, I think just for feeling purposes alone, it's definitely worth it. If you're in the US, I think you can get it for about 15 bucks. But ordering from the US here, it was something like 50 Australian dollars for shipping. So I just uh, bit the bullet and paid the 40 Australian dollars. So for the rear brake side, the first thing we want to do is loosen the two bolts holding the rear brake master cylinder and the heel guard because uh, it's a little harder to do if you take the whole reset off first. Now if you can tell mine are already loose that's because I've been riding around with the re new resets for three days already uh, so I just put these back on to show you guys. Save these bolts because we're reusing them the reset kit does not come with new ones. Next, we have to get this retaining clip off so we can detach the shaft of the master cylinder from the actual rear set. So if you look closely, you just need to push this part past the retaining bolt. So you can use a pair of pliers, whatever you have, just out and then down. Then we can remove the retaining bolt and the master cylinder just comes off. Now we can come in and remove these bolts. So the last thing to disconnect is the actual rear sensor light. So I want to show you guys what this looks like. So here we have the spring to put the tension on the lever. And we have a second spring that pulls the brake switch as the lever goes down. So because our new resets don't have this little plate here to attach this, we're gonna have to uh, put the new sensor you saw earlier on. But to get this off, it's a little bit of, it's just some plastic push pins. 
to push the tops in. Okay guys, so this step is optional because depending on where you're gonna use your bike, you may not need the rear brake to actuate the rear sensor. But if you're not doing this, uh, I'll put a little card up now to show you where to skip in the video to continue on with the next part. In Australia, if you're riding on the road, you need the rear brake to light to work in order to pass registration. Uh, and my registration is due in eight weeks, so I'm putting it on. Now, the way that this pressure switch works is it replaces this banjo bolt here. So you're going to get a little bit of brake fluid everywhere and you're going to need to bleed your rear brake system again. However, when you put it in, it attaches to the master cylinder directly. So it doesn't matter whether you put your stock rear sets back on, you go through six different brands of other rear sets, none of them need to alter this switch. It will work no matter what. So every time you press the rear brake, it pushes the, it pushes the brake fluid up, pressure increases, switch turns on. So what I'm gonna do, because you're never gonna need to change this again, is I'm gonna cut the old pull switch off. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna crimp on these little clips here. And it's just gonna go like this. Super clean. So because I'm about to use some force to undo this banjo bolt, I'm going to attach this back to the rear set this way, just to give me a little bit more leverage. So we're pushing, opening, let the bubbles out, closing, and then releasing. And when you release, it takes more fluid from the reservoir. Push, open, close. So now we've bled the master cylinder. So we've got air out of this area. We may have pushed some air into this line. So now we need to bleed it. We follow the line over here. Push, loosen, close. And the whole time you're doing this, you want to keep an eye on your brake reservoir. You do not want this to go to empty. We've got to keep topping this up. Push, loosen, close. Look at all these air bubbles. Push. Okay, so there's a lock nut that holds this end piece on. We need to loosen it.
Alright, now we can put the new rear set on. So, the first thing we need to do is bolt the master cylinder to the rear set. It's easier doing this first. Next, we'll put the retaining pin back in the rear set and then the clip back on. Now, you want to look in your service manual to find out what the torque values for all these bolts are. So for these ones, the ones that reuse the same stock bolts, you look in your service manual. On the Attack Performance website, it'll give you all the torque values for all these individual ones. Now I've checked, uh, because it is recommended that all these are Loctited, especially being uh, controls for the bike. I undid one bolt already, it had Loctite on it, so I put more on, did a backup, and uh, checked the rest of the bolts already. Okay, so on this side, what we need to do first is loosen the lock nut that uh, tightens this side of the shift rod. So in this photo, you can see that I'm going to show you, we're going to loosen that. Then there's a circlet that you need to pull out before the rear end of this will pop off. So loosen this lock nut. Pop off this circlet. Pops off. It comes out. Next, I'm going to loosen these two bolts. Now, in the back of the left side rear set, you can see this is the replacement ball joint. Now, this is the only joint that I did not see that was Loctited. So, I'm going to Loctite that after we undo it and attach it to the bike. Secondly, with these rear sets, you have these four holes. Now, I already said earlier that I've been riding around with this for a few days already. Now, in this top hole, you get a very precise gear shift feeling, but it's you need a lot of pressure. So, uh, and it also makes it really hard to get into neutral. So I'm gonna try the opposite end, down the bottom, and we're gonna see how easy it is to ride around with that. But I'm assuming this is gonna be personal preference. So we're gonna undo this bolt from the bore joint. And these bore joints, uh, if you refer to the attack website, it says uh, you can just lubricate them with chain loop. For this bike, the manual says 27 newton meters.
The only thing you want to check. This is a tricky beat production. Is the clearance for the shift rod. You want to make sure that nothing is rubbing, so there's clearance all around it. 